market of container homes in the US. Mike, I'll let you kick off on this one. Yeah, this this is what makes me the most excited. I mean, probably the best slide we can talk about today. Again, in our pitch last week to Mr. Wonderful um, through Start Engine, again, the, the total adjustable market that we have as container builders, manufacturers that are doing really good things in the right way. I mean, we're, we're talking, there's billions and billions of dollars to be had or to be made in this industry in the next five to 10 years across this across North America. Um, but zoning restrictions are loosening. I mean, the affordable housing crisis is real. And, uh, you know, I encourage you guys to go look at our pitch deck to Mr. Wonderful. And we talk about, you know, the availability, affordability of homes in this country. Here in Florida, I mean, your average home is now close to $400,000. We're just a regular old home here in Florida. Again, California market's even crazier. Vegas, Tony, the same thing, right? So we have an affordability crisis, right? We also have a population flux. So we have populations that are fluxing into different states for different reasons. So now we have areas of the country or cities. Now we're having to find housing for people that we didn't need before or it wasn't planned for before. So how can you quickly solve an affordable housing crisis problem? How can we scale quickly, get units on the ground or in the ground and solve all those problems at the same time? We feel at Containing Luxury that the container home or the container home model is a great solution to kind of knock out all those problems at the same time. We can scale, we can go to market quickly, we can manufacture in a controlled environment, we can roll units out the back door and work with cities, municipalities and governments and states to get things done the right way, build the right communities for the right type of people and, and, and just build a wonderful product. And that's the thing that probably excites us the most and um, I think that came through last week, and I think Mr. Wonderful kind of, kind of felt that passion as well. But um, that's just that's what gets us up every day, in terms of what the opportunity is, just to kind of help and grow this market and serve a need that really exists. That's fantastic. Yeah, I love that he. I mean, because I, I was watching it live with you guys, um, or while you guys were on there, and um, I had I'd heard the other pitches. And, you know, it came to the end and he's like, okay, I'm going to pick, you know, I don't know if he called it his favorite one or the one he thought was the best. And um, I was really curious where he, where his stance was going to be on this whole topic. And it was really encouraging to hear him say, man, this is an incredible solution. Because back in 2016, when I built my first container, I've always felt like this is such an incredible solution to be able to uh, build a smaller home, you know, and people can build bigger container homes, but the natural footprint of a container is so small mm -hmm. that it really isn't a, such an excellent affordable housing option, given that it's super structurally strong. It's already got the exterior skeleton there for you. Um, and, you know, I think over the last several years of talking with different building departments, zoning departments, like I noted here, I've, no I've noticed that more and more building and zoning departments are warmed up to the idea of a container home. Um, and not only that, but even the International Building Code, there's actually legislation and writing in place as it relates to how to build with container homes. So it's not so much calling the building department in, early, in the early days, man, they would think I was crazy when I said I wanted to put a container home in someone's backyard. They really did. They thought yeah. I was talking like, man, you're going to ruin the values of the neighborhood and all these things. And now they, they really understand what it is. Most of them think it's really cool. And there's a path forward for how to do it. And like that last slide says, and it's like what we've been talking about earlier, you know, they are legalizing things like this more and more uh, and making the process more streamlined and simple so that it can be accomplished, given that there's just such a need um, for housing. So I just think that's really cool. Yeah. And you're, you're, Tony, you're so spot on. I mean, the, the environment's changing to your point. Regulations are lifting. You know, the old guard, right? The old guard that we find in these zoning and planning, you know, municipalities, you know, it's, it's the changing of minds. And I find more of what I do is I educate, you know, a lot of folks is like, oh, we've always done it this way. We don't know what this product is. We don't understand it. So we're just going to say no. And, and my job and a lot of us here at Containing Luxury and, and client, our clients is, hey, let us time out. Let us educate you as to what we're doing here. We're, we're using a you know, recycled product. It's eco-friendly. The environmental footprint is low. It's, a, it's green. It's affordable. So Mr. Zoning and Planning Chairman person, you mean to tell me you're not for affordable housing that has a low impact and low footprint to the environment and we're also recycling things at the same time? You're, are you against that, Mr. Zoning Chairman? 
<laughs> you know, or building inspector. And then they kind of sit back on their seat and say, wait a minute, I think you're right. Let me take another look at this. So it's really about yeah. education and into changing of minds, but it's happening faster and faster every day. I love it. Yeah, that's a great, that's a great way to, to phrase it.